Right, guys. <coughs> so in this video, I'm going to be making two dipoles. Uh, one for 40 meters and one for 20 meters. So the 40 meter dipole is uh, 14.2 megahertz. The total length will be uh, 10.5 meters. Each leg is 5.2 meters, but I'm gonna cut it to 5.5 meters. Um, 40 meter dipole will be the target frequency is 7.150. Um, total length of the 40, my, 40 meter dipole is 19.95 meters. Each leg will be 9.98 and I'm gonna cut to 10 meters. That gives me just a little bit more to play with to get the SWR right. And also by the time I fold the end to make the connections inside the dipole. So it's not that critical um, at this stage because I'll be able to SWR by the ends. So how I've gone about this, I've been thinking about it. So I currently have a off center fed dipole, which is up on the chimney stack. Um, basically it loops around the top of the chimney pot and comes back down and then the angles like that. Now, what my plan is, is to stack two dipoles on top of each other. Now I know people are saying, just make a fan dipole. Now I don't want to make a fan dipole because I believe a multi-band antenna is more noisier than a mono-band antenna. I've had great results with my 80 meter dipole. Um, that's out in the field. I still need to get get out of the field and sort that out. Um, but at the moment, I'm currently using it with a 7300 on a tuner. And um, yeah, I'm cracking out. I'm doing really well with it. So because I suffer from noise on the QTH, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make two dipoles and I'm going to stack them together. So how I've decided to do this is I went to my local electronics, like electrical outlet. We have a Sam's Trade Center, and I come across these boxes. So straight away, you can see the idea. Coax in here, two antenna wires there. They're IP66 rated. The coax will be fine when the seal goes around the coax, that'll be fine. They don't go down enough here. So I'm gonna put a bit of insulation tape on the legs that come out. And then I'll just seal that with a bit of um, glue line heat shrink. So just to make that part of the wire thicker so it can get a watertight seal on it. So I thought I'd go with these. And I'm going to have one. Yeah, which will be my 40 at the top. Then I'm going to have a gap. And I'm going to join them together with a bit of this plastic conduit. Yeah, I'm going to drill through the back so it'll be like that. Then there'll be another one a couple of foot away underneath. Yeah. Then the wire I've chosen to use it, because it's experimental, I'm going to make it out of what I've already made the off center fed dipole out of, which is this, I believe it's 3.5 millimeter multi strand speaker wire that you would use for a sub subwoofer in a in a car. In, in an automobile, a car, van or whatever, you're going to put a sub in. Um, it's quite thick. It solders really well. There's not much memory to it. It does, you know, well, there is quite a bit of memory to it, but it's just cable on it. Nothing special. And cheap. 50 metres of this was a tenner. So that will do for what I needed to. The 80 metre dipole is made out of this stuff but even thinner than this, because it's all I could get hold of at the time, and that is working really well. So I'll be making it with this, and if I get good results, then I might decide to take it down and make it with some DX10, etc. The coax um, will be Mini 8. I've just ordered the drum of Mini 8. I use it on all my little projects and stuff. Um, at the end of the coax, I will have a PL259, and then I will put a double female one on that, so then I can uh, put a lead 
to plug into the um, off to the antenna so that's my plan um, so I'm gonna record me building it and then I'm gonna put it in a um, put it in a uh, what do you call it speed it up in a time lapse and see if that works so for now catch you on the other side wicked right guys the time lapse didn't work so uh, this is the box that I used obviously and a bit of the uh, the uh, mini 8 coax all stripped down and uh, ready for the old um, soldering uh, that's the plug down on it a PL259 and that's some glue lined heat shrink that I've used just to protect the um, water ingress uh, that's the uh, coax being passed through the box you can see the PL259 sits there quite nice um, all good so far um, that's in strips both ends down um, ready to solder the uh, the inner conductor and the outer braid of the coax um, made the connections inside the box ready for the soldering and there you go it's all soldered in all inside the box the box are waterproof um, and got the cables either side um, so the diameter of the cable was too small so I um, I made the diameter thicker by putting some uh, glue line heat shrink on it and I tied a knot in each leg so when you pulled it through, um, when you pulled it through, it um, couldn't pull out. Just text, testing the connections for um, continuity, making sure there's no shorts between the inner and the outer. That's the finished product. That's what it looks like inside. Very basic antenna. Um, very basic antenna. Uh, works really well as it happens. Uh, making some uh, homemade uh, insulators for the ends uh, just on top of my old standy toolbox there just a bit of uh, plumbing conduit um, and that's the final uh, that's the final um, situation so you've got the two you got the two dipole stacks on each other 20 at the bottom and the 40 at the top um, this is the side of the house the photos ain't great um, that was with that's the off center fed uh, ballum coming down um, and these are the, the cables coming out of my shack on the right hand side because I had to run another feeder now obviously because there's two antennas not one I'm feeding um, and then that's the picture of the uh, chimney stack there with the cable that goes down behind the house it comes round the chimney and comes back down um, and this was me just prepping the antenna outside on the floor ready to be um, hoisted up there you go, it's hanging off of some paracord now with the two feeders on the right hand side. My little box of tools in the middle. And you can see it's getting ready to go up. It was, it went up okay, it was a bit of a nightmare, but um, mucking about and a bit of improvisation, managed to get it up in the de desired location. Uh, that's a picture of it up, that's the 40 metre leg coming towards us and the 20 going off to the left and then you've got the same the other side, you can just make out the pair of them. Um, that's quite a good picture there. Um, yeah, that's the, the, the 40 at the top and the 20 at the bottom. So we whacked it on the SWR analyzer just to see where we was with it. Uh, this is 40 metres. Um, I had a swar of about 1 to 1 roughly on uh, 40 metres, quite good, can't complain. Um, and the soir on 20 of about 1.1 1 .1, 1 to 6, which weren't too bad. I think it's the location of the legs on the uh, 20 metres. They're too close together. This is what 20 metres looks like on uh, 0 to 30 megahertz, just, uh, just to have a look and see what the antenna's playing about with. And the same on the old, um, same on the old 40. So thanks for watching, and I'll uh, catch you a bit later. See you later.